forms of transportation are required in the military service. Pack transportation, the means of transporting loads on the backs of pack animals, is of the greatest importance in campaign. The light Phillips pack saddle is used for the cavalry to transport machine guns, ammunition, rations, medical kits, and all other equipment required in the field. With cavalry pack loads, the horse is used exclusively. The horses used in cavalry pack transportation, as you will see later, are specially selected and trained. They must accompany the cavalry, doing everything that a cavalry horse is required to do, thus making possible the success of operations in difficult terrain where the swift mobility of the cavalry is required. Therefore, it is imperative that every trooper knows the fundamentals of cavalry pack transportation. You men are assembled here to learn these fundamentals of cavalry pack transportation, including the selection and training of pack horses, saddling and unsaddling, the various hangar loads, and finally, the lash load. First of all, in order to pack successfully, you've got to know how to select a good pack animal. Let's look at an animal that meets the requirements of a good pack horse. Height, from 15 to 15 and one half hands. Weight, from 1,000 to 1,150 pounds, with a compact and stocky build. Medium withers. well-muscled back. A deep girth to which a load can be secured. If that's what we want in a pack horse, what are the points we don't want? Here is a poor pack animal. He's too light. His withers are too thin. He has no barrel, nothing to tie to. Compared to the normal horse, he is narrow-chested. He has too long a back. He's so tall, he'd be difficult to pack. Now, let's see the third horse. Compared to the normal horse, he is much too broad across the chest. Such breadth causes side sway and wobbling, which we want to avoid. The ideal pack horse has normal withers, well sprung ribs. His legs are straight and large boned. His feet are good. He should walk, trot, and gallop freely and boldly. He's gentle and free of bad habits. Sergeant Spencer, take the men to the riding ring and instruct them in saddling and unsaddling the pack horse. The first step in saddling is to groom the back and sides of the horse. Next comes this mohair saddle pad, which absorbs and evaporates sweat and keeps the horse's back cool. It's put on with short sides from front to rear. Thongs up and to the front, so that the forward edge will be about three inches in front of the saddle. The saddle is always placed on the horse by two men. It's lifted over the rear and placed gently on the back. 
The thongs on the mohair pad are adjusted and tied to the saddle. It is raised slightly over the withers to avoid pressure. The man on the offside now passes the cinches under the horse. The man on the near side hooks them up to the D-ring of the saddle. Let's watch this closely now. The right hand is placed below the quick release device. The left hand close to the cinch ring. Pull up with the left. Press down with the right until the cinch is tightened. The free end is pulled until the metal loop is snug against the buckle and the strap is now locked. Since the cavalry pack saddle is a double cinch saddle, we don't need an extremely tight cinch. Final adjustments are always made after the load is on and every time you halt on the march. Then the breeching is placed over the horse's rump. The breast strap is put on this way. Lay this pad across the animal's neck and then simply snap the strap into these rings. Well, we've got the saddle on, so let's see how to take it off. First, the breast strap is unhooked. Then the breeching is placed on the saddle. Then, by pulling the D-ring of the quick release device with your right hand and pushing on the saddle with your left, you take slack. To release the cinch, simply use the thumb and forefinger on the quick release device and it's done. The cinches are put on top of the saddle. Then the thong is untied. The saddle is taken off as it is put on by two men. Next, the mohair pad is removed. It's folded with the wet side in and laid across the top of the pack. Sergeant, why is the wet side of the pad folded in? So that the sun won't bake in the sweat, hair, and dirt and harden the pad. Any more questions? All right, then. I've got a few unsaddled horses over here, and I want you to saddle them. Two men to a horse. When you're finished, I'll come over and check up. The saddle is centered pretty well, but it's too far forward on the pad. Here's another thing to remember. Keep the pad raised slightly over the withers to avoid pressure. You can tie it up with these thongs. Move the saddle so it'll be about three inches back of the shoulder blade and you'll be okay. Measure it with the width of four fingers from the edge of the pad. That's it. bad job at all, except that you got the pad on backwards. The thong should be to the front. Be sure you have an equal amount of pad on each side. That's it.
You got that rear cinch too tight. Just how tight should it be, Sergeant? Only tight enough to hold the rear of the saddle in contact with the horse's back. Loosen it up a little. Thumb and forefinger. Now loosen it up a little. That's it. All right, men. Now we will go over and watch the pack horse training class. Whoever picked those pack horses knew what he was doing. They're all new, just like you men. Fresh from their basic training at Remount Depot. All cavalry horses are riding horses. We subdivide them for a pack and mount according to how we use them. They all get the same basic training. That's because a pack horse is supposed to do everything that a mount does. We use the same principles and that makes the training of pack animals much easier. There's a pack horse over there that's pretty well trained. Watch him. He'll travel alongside the saddle horse of the driver, or he'll drop behind when it's wanted. Or come back alongside again. He will turn to the right turn to the left. He will increase the gate. Or decrease the gate. Or come to a halt without any pulling on the part of the driver. Looks easy, doesn't it? That's because it's a well-trained team. You see, the driver has to be trained as well as the horse. Corporal! Not a minute! Corporal, I'd like you to take this white rein and glove so the men can see them and demonstrate how to turn and control the pack horse. First, the right turn. You see? He raises his hand straight to the front with the lead rein and carries it to the right. This way, he applies a bearing rein on the horse's neck. The turn to the left is pretty much the same, except that this time, after he raises his hand straight to the front, he carries it to the left. That way, he applies the leading rein. What you've just seen is comparatively simple. Most of the training time is spent in preparing the horses to carry heavy packs, building them up by gradually increasing the weight and distance covered in practice marches. Sergeant, how long does it take to train a good pack horse? Normally, it'll take about three or four months to strengthen and harden the animal's carrying muscles. Lately, we've had to speed up training, but you've got to remember we're working with animals. If we speed up too much, we're liable to injure the horses. We've covered the selection saddling and unsaddling, and the training of the pack horse. Two types Phillips pack saddles. 
the cargo saddle, and the cavalry pack saddle. Since they differ only in size and weight, let's concentrate on one, the one we'll use, the Phillips Cavalry Pack Saddle. Now let's remove the saddle from the horse so that we can study each part separately. First of all, let's look at the two felt saddle pads. They can be taken off or put on the metal frame easily and quickly without the use of tools. They are taken out by removing the four bottom bar pocket pins and unhooking the pads from the top. This is the metal frame to which the felt saddle pads and other equipment is attached. The outer side of the pad is leather. In order to show it more clearly, we will use a prepared section of the saddle pad. It's reinforced inside with ribs or bars of aluminum alloy. The underside is of woven felt. It's stuffed with curled horsehair. On the outside lower corners are these metal pockets. which are used for locking the bottom of the pads to the frame with what we call bottom bar pocket pins. This is the mohair saddle pad used under the saddle. It absorbs and evaporates sweat. The breast strap is used on the front of the saddle to prevent the load from slipping backward when going up steep incline. The breeching is used to eliminate motion and to keep the saddle from slipping forward. These footrests are used to keep the saddle off the ground and for holding the ropes of hitched loads, which will be explained in detail later. Every saddle has two of these adjustable mohair strand cinches. Each cincher has this rapid cinching and release device. Through the metal frame, the cinch strap is threaded. and then through the cinch ring. After the loop is made, the D-ring of the quick release device is put on. And this metal frame provides a lock on the cinch strap.
Also, you see, it allows you to adjust cinch pressure carefully and does away with tying and untying knots. You have been shown all the separate parts of the Phillips Cavalry pack saddle. Now we come to about the most important thing you men will have to learn, the adjustment of a new pack saddle. Bring in that new saddle we picked up. You see, each saddle you put on a horse has to be adjusted to that particular horse's back. And it can't be used on any other horse without complete readjustment. Now, the fit of a saddle is as important to a horse as the fit of a shoe is to a soldier. These pack saddles are made so that very little adjustments are necessary on the normal horse. However, this weight-bearing surface of the saddle has to conform perfectly with this, the weight-bearing surface of the horse's back. Is that clear? Just where is the weight-bearing part of a horse's back? That's what I'll show you now. Corporal, take your chalk and outline the weight-bearing surface. Just on this side will be enough. Notice that he skips the withers, because we don't want any pressure there, or on the backbone, the loin, or flank. There. That's the only part that should carry weight. And that's the part we've got to adjust the saddle to. To hold that adjustment, we may have to readjust the lower part of the pad, which carries no weight, but must fit. Now let's see how that saddle fits this horse's back. It's put on without the mohair saddle pad. Then these cinches are tightened until they fit snugly. By glancing along the back, you get a general idea of where there is too much or too little weight. And you can see if the saddle is centered. By running your cupped hand back along the horse's back, you can find the low or high spots in the saddle. The next step would be for us to take this horse out now and uh, work him until he sweats. Then take the saddle off, turn it upside down. You would find wet spots that indicated pressure and dry spots indicating no pressure. That's called reading the saddle. Corporal, bring in that sweated horse you have ready for us. Bailey, think you can read that saddle? Well, I can try, Sergeant. The wet spots here and over here indicate too much pressure, and the dry spots indicate little or no pressure. On the horse's back, if you look now, you would find the same wet and dry spots. That means that the horse probably has a bumpy or a chafe spot. Here we are. Look closely. It's badly chafed. That means only one thing. Too much pressure. Let's mark that bad spot with some zinc oxide. Then we'll put the saddle on carefully and the zinc oxide will mark the spot that's causing trouble.
There it is. Now we know just where the pad has to be adjusted to the horse's back. Let's fix it. First, we remove the felt pad by taking out those two pocket pins. And then unhook it from the frame. Now we're all set. Here are the tools we'll use. The hair hook, two stuffing rods, the large one and the small one, the awl, and the hammer. We use this tool, the hair hook, to untie the tuck knots. remove the handhold cover and if necessary to remove hair from the pad. That chafe spot showed there was too much hair so we'll have to take some of it out. Then we'll rearrange it with a large stuffing rod this way. After the hair is removed, the awl is used to change the position of the thong so as to take all pressure off the chafe spot. The thong is threaded through the awl this way. Then it is pulled back through. Now the other end of the thong is pulled through. The chamber is checked by placing the pad on the horse in its usual position. Now we use a prepared section of the pad to show the effect of the chamber. Notice where the removal of hair and the rearrangement of the thongs has drawn up the chambered area so that the pad no longer touches the chafe spot on the horse, the weight being distributed to other areas of the saddle. As the horse's back heals, the pad is gradually restored to its normal shape by stuffing in more hair. To put more hair in the pad, you'd use the large stuffing rod. The smaller one is handy in the field for making minor adjustments without taking the saddle apart. Simply insert it this way and make the minor adjustments. All during the process of training a pack horse, breaking him into his loads, the saddle must be checked constantly and necessary adjustments made until it fits perfectly. 
Well, it's almost time for a recall. This afternoon, Lieutenant White will take up the loading of hangar loads and finally the lash load. 